Hi, I'm Craig, and welcome back to another on the road video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. Today, we will take a look at the Samana freestanding gas range. We will show you how to remove and replace your DSI board. To begin your repair, we must first access the back of the unit. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for the proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the gas. Tools you will need for this repair is a number two Phillips screwdriver and a tack puller. Now that we are at the back of the unit, we must first remove this bottom back panel. There are multiple number two Phillips screws around the perimeter that must be taken off. I do recommend saving the ones at the top for last. This will prevent it from sliding. Make sure you hold on to the panel when removing your last screw. At this point, slide out from the bottom, pull down, and set aside. Next, to remove your top panel, there are also two Phillips screws holding it on. When removing, make sure you apply pressure to it so that the top panel does not slide down. Slide out on the bottom of the panel, drop down, and set it aside. Now that we have the panels removed, we have clear access to our DSI control. Now, the main reason why you'd be replacing a DSI is if the unit will not spark. So you do want to go through all of the other steps on this unit to ensure that it is nothing else, such as checking the bottom drawer to make sure that there are no pans that are too far up that could be touching the electrode. Make sure your main wiring harness is not broken. And also make sure that your igniters are properly ground and that your outlet has proper polarity. Now if all of these check okay and you do have to replace the DSI board, to replace it there is one screw underneath that will have to be removed. It is a Phillips screw. Once you remove this, we will slide up on our DSI. and pull out. You can see the top here, these circular riveted anchors slide into the slotted area on the casing. Now this is a very fragile board, so if you are going to replace it, do not remove the wiring harnesses until after you have pulled it off. I do recommend using a tack puller or a flat blade screwdriver to slide underneath the Molex and give it a twist. This will just kind of break it loose. Do the same with the other wiring connections. Some of these can be very stingy, but do not put too much pressure on the actual control when you're removing it, just in case. Set your board aside. Now when installing your new board, do not plug in the wiring until after it is installed. Slide it into place so that the rivets match up on the actual slide spot on the casing. You'll also see that the board itself has anchored into a slotted area on the bottom. Replace your Phillips holding screw. Now we will reinstall the wiring starting with the green ground, followed by the white connection, and then the brown connection. Then we will reinstall our Molex at the top. Now we can reinstall our covers. When reinstalling your top panel, 
you'll want to slide in at the top so that the portion going across the top of the console is slid underneath the tabs. Reinstall your first top side screw. Hold your panel so that it cannot drop. Reinstall the second screw. Now we can reinstall the bottom panel. When reinstalling your bottom panel, make sure that your top lips go over the top of the top portion. Slide it into place. Reinstall your first screw. Hold on to the panel. Reinstall your second top screw. Reinstall the others around the perimeter. This will complete your repair. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.